Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. In this video, we're going to talk about creating a nice 2D intro with accent explosions. So the goal with this tutorial is to show how we can quickly duplicate accent explosions and make a dynamic 2D scene within a matter of minutes. So let's jump right into this and let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is we want to bring in a logo and any other customizable background we want that. So right now, I'm not going to go ahead and show you how to do this, but obviously this is simple. I brought in a logo, the After Effects logo, and I just created a semicircle and I added a drop shot off. Of course, the circle is you know optional, uh, but go ahead and bring, bring in your logo into a separate composition. And when that's done, we'll go into our main comp called Tutorial. And in here, I have a background. So once you have your logo in here, we can bring in this composition or the logo layer by itself. And we can bring it into here just like this and hit S on keyboard to scale it down and we'll have a nice little position there. So we have a nice little drop shadow going on, but this is all, of course all optional. I'm focusing on the accent explosions. And before we jump into the accent explosions, I wanna create a nice reveal. So what we can do is bring in, in like another background layer. So I have this beautiful mountain photo and I'm gonna make this fit through the comp size real fast. And what I wanna do is when, right when the accent explosions start, I want to reveal to this image. So what I wanna do is go up to layer new solid and We'll call it circle reveal. And I want to make the width and height 1080 by 1080. 1080 by 1080, click OK. And we're going to select the ellipse tool and we're going to double click it. And basically we get this nice circle here. And all we're going to do is hit S on keyboard for scale and set this down to zero. And we're going to move forward maybe by to maybe two seconds and we'll animate this all the way until it reveals our entire composition. And we'll make both these keyframes easy ease keyframes. And let's move to like maybe right here where like the circles kind of, you know, from with the, from the height here filling up the screen. Let's go ahead and add a keyframe by clicking the keyframe button there. And we can drag out the last keyframe by a little bit. So basically it'll come in a little bit fast and then it'll slow down as it fills in. So that's really cool. Let's bring the circle reveal layer underneath our logo layer or right above our background layer. And toggle switch in the modes until you see the track mat. And for the background, Set the track mat to alpha mat. So now we'll have this very nice uh, circle reveal and it'll just go right to our background. So I think that's really cool. And now that we're looking good, we can continue to move forward, forward with our animation. So let's go ahead and create those accident explosions that we were talking about. And let's start with my favorite, which are the lines. So let's grab the rounded rectangle tool and we can zoom in here if you need to. And we'll just draw a very thin rectangle like so. And we can change the color to any color that we want. Maybe we'll do like a you know, a light blue here and we'll click OK. And let's go to add on for our shape layer here and let's add repeater. OK, with the repeater, we need to go to the X position here and we need to set this down to zero. And then what we need to do is all click the stopwatch for rotation, type in 360 forward slash, grab the pick whip right here and pick whip it to the number of copies. And of course, we can come here and increase the number of copies, maybe to like 15. And basically we get, you know, 360 forward slash pick whip to copies. And now we can go into the rectangle path one, go into the position here, go to the Y position, and we can increase this. And now we have a separated accent explosion. And of course, now we want to center this up with our composition. So what we can do is just come here and just bring it down, make it nice and centered with our comp. And let's go ahead and just crease the accent explosion until like it's a rounder circle here. And now we want to animate this. So... Let's go ahead and set ourselves up for success so we can duplicate this. So let's go ahead and you know add a keyframe for size and position. Move forward in time, maybe like by a second. And let's you know increase the position here so it'll kind of move out like so. So now we'll have like this. And then let's go ahead and bring this keyframe to like the between the middle of our position keyframes. And and for size, let's break the chain here and set the Y size to zero. And basically we'll have like it growing out and then we'll go to the last position keyframe here and set the Y size down to zero again. Now we have like this very nice accent explosion in here and we'll fix this up. And let's make all these keyframes easy ease keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard. So now, boom, we have this you know, very nice accent explosion. And if you want to add any extra animation to it, so maybe we'll hit R on our keyboard for rotation, add a keyframe for rotation, go, by, go forward by a second. And let's increase the rotation by a touch. So kind of rotate a little bit. And of course we want to make sure that the anchor point is in the middle of our composition. So what we can do is go to layer, uh, transform, and 
center anchor point and layer content. So now everything will come from the center of the comp and it'll look great. So now we can go ahead and continue to duplicate this. So let's rename this to accent one. And now we can duplicate this layer by going up to edit, duplicate. And now we go back into the contents, go into rectangle one, rectangle path one, and we can grab both of the uh, position keyframes here, go to the first keyframe, and we can increase the Y position by a little bit. And maybe we'll even increase the last Y keyframe position just by a little bit more. And we can change the color. So maybe this time we'll make it a little bit more logo color. So maybe we'll do like a dark purple. And if we have to, we can always, you know, increase the size across the board here. So maybe like the size here can be a little bit bigger or smaller, depending on what you want to do. I guess we'll do a little bit smaller. And, you know, things are looking good. We can go ahead and, you know, increase the number of copies. Um, and of course, this looks nice. So what we can do is maybe offset this by a little bit in time. So they don't all come on at the same time. And we continue to work with this. So we can duplicate the accent too. We do like another one here, offset this. Uh, maybe this time we'll, you know, change up the rotation by a little bit. So, so, so just select both keyframes here and we'll just select the rotation and we'll go back into the contents and we'll do a little bit more variation to it. So let's say we want to add another shape in here other than these rectangles. All we have to do is just duplicate the accent, bring it to the top and we'll go ahead and open this up and we'll just draw out like a nice ellipse. So we can draw it out from the center and that should be cool. And what we need to do is actually bring the repeater outside of the rectangle one, just to so bring that right underneath the ellipse here. And we'll just retype the expression because I kind of did a little messed up there, but no big deal. We'll go in here to transform one, go into the repeater here or the expression for rotation, just delete the pick what content and just repick with it to the copies. And there won't be any issues there. And what we'll do is actually even delete the rotation keyframes. And from here, uh, we will, uh, we'll go back into the ellipse one, go to the ellipse path one, and we'll add a keyframe for position and size, and we'll redo this real quick, and we'll increase the size, the Y size here to like 600, and we'll go to the size over here, bring this keyframe in the middle, and we'll set the size down to zero, bring in, go to the first keyframe, and set the size down to zero as well. So now we should have something like this. And of course, what I would like to do is decrease the size by a lot here. So these are not overwhelmingly too big. Cool. And of course, I want to make sure that this is going to be in the middle of our composition. So I'll go ahead and just bring this up to where it'll be nice in the center here. And we can change the color to something else as well. Click OK. And we can offset this. So now we should have like a nice circle in here. And then of course, we can just delete the rectangle one. And we'll make our other keyframes easy, easy keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard. Cool. And we come over here and let's duplicate this layer. And let's just come into, just hit P on your keyboard for position. And we can increase the position here. So it'll be a little bit further out. And we can increase the rotation, change the color. So do like a blue color, click OK. And of course, for our local layer, let's go ahead and add a nice scale animation here as well. So let's go to like before the accents come on. So like right here, let's say S on keyboard for scale, add a keyframe for scale, move that forward in time and set the scale down to 0%. Make both these keyframes easy, easy keyframes. And you should have these nice explosions and they should be going good. So what I would do even before the animation is I would take the first three accents, duplicate them, um, and we'll bring them to the beginning of our timeline. So hit U on keyboard. And brings forward here. So there'll be a little bit of pre-animation here. Of course, you can make this a little bit more uh, random. Of course, you can just redo everything, but we'll go ahead and go through this and we'll go ahead and make a few changes here. So things are not looking too weird. So maybe for this circle explosion, which is going to be this accent, accent four, we'll go into the contents, go into ellipse one, go to ellipse path one, go to the position keyframe, and we can increase the Y position by a little bit. So it's not going to start off in the middle, crowding everything there. So that's looking good. And for the most part, you can go ahead and take these techniques and continue to duplicate uh, what we need to do. So go ahead and turn on motion blur for all your layers. And you should be able to go from there. And after a quick render, this is what we have. And a nice little bunch of accent explosions here and a little bit of shape animation. So hope you guys can take away a few techniques from this tutorial. 
And if you guys did enjoy the video, please drop a like, subscribe to the channel for more After Effects videos just like this, and be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of the video. And as always, thank you so much for watching this tutorial, and I hope you have a good day.